thought about disasters in urban urbanism. The reason why I thought of this um, question, the initial idea, come from my mom, because when I first came to there, she asked me, "Do you know is there any hazards to you? If you there is earthquake, how do you escape from buildings? And if what what else do you need to think?" And um, that's why just uh, focusing on the disasters uh, at the beginning. And then, um, actually, the first thing I focus on is the earthquake. But uh, um, the area I want to narrow down is in Auckland because it's more near to my life. I can have a um, visually see of the future uh, of the nature landscape. So, um, but uh, now I'm going to start with the uh, worldwide uh, nature and uh, weather. Because from this table, I found that uh, the nature disasters and extreme weather have grown in worldwide, um, especially in recent years. Many people lost their lives in this kind of disasters. Um, we can see, especially the 2011 showing this picture. It's extremely hard, and uh, the. And, the, and then I researched the geology conditions. To be honest, I have never lived this volcano. But when I searched it, I found all oh, that's crazy because uh, our Auckland built just on the volcano field with the um, terrestrial and very sediments. Um, and I'm thinking, oh, I'm living in the volcano, <laughs> and I don't know. But this, it will be erupt. So I <laughs> keep searching. Um, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and yes, from this picture, you can see our New Zealand is surrounded by the same <coughs> where you live with Australia plate and Pacific plate. We go stretch and we have this kind of um, landscapes. We have uh, beautiful views of the volcano. We also have uh, the potential, potential risks and hazard from volcanoes. And um, I searched out when well, Auckland Council, I found when and where future eruptions will occur in its unknown. And that's, um, uh, that, um, the, and the, I found that there will be 8% possibilities. Um, for each 80 years, there could be an eruption in this um, each of volcanoes they include fifty six volcanoes um, and uh, I also found two of the possible uh, pos possible result hazards from this volcano. Uh, actually, at first I, I researched is just the earthquake, um, but I found Auckland don't have that that much risk because uh, we live. Um, if we go back to that picture, um, I um, we there's a forest from that segment. Um, it's around 300 meters. Um, so compared with Christchurch, we have a low hazard from earthquake. But once volcanoes erupts, each one can result in that earthquake, and that that would also cause in negative effects. Um, and then I followed the, my pace. I found um, the challenge is coming because our Auckland is growing. Mm, they already have. They already is the biggest city in New Zealand. And Auckland has one mm, one point five of four um, millions of mm, New Zealanders. Um, so we have a high density already, and in this future climate, we can say in the short time we're going to grow um, one million of people. But uh, my thinking is, is there more high density is the more risks for our people's life. Um, how can we get survive in this such condition? So the. Uh, I also come out another idea is multifunctional use of the public space um, because the shortage use of this land uh, of the land use also arise the pop popular concept of this multifunction. 
Mm. So we can use it in like the go just a present to the roof and some other ostrich or something. <coughs> yeah, before I kick off my recent question, <laughs> I ask myself, why do why do we know it? Why we still live with hot disasters? <laughs> I keep searching it, and I found there is no exactly purpose to search why people live with disasters. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm sure there isn't an absolutely safe place in this world. <laughs> so I'm thinking, shall, shall we just set up a place uh, once the earthquake or some natural disasters happen, we can go there to cut down the loss and uh, to save more lives. Um, so my research question is, how can we create public sheltering spaces in Auckland to ensure safety from natural disaster? Mm, the first thing come up to my mind is public parks, because among the growing high density city as an important role in urban planning, parks have already been interpreted with human activities and formed into a green life system. And, and it's easy for me to find a big room to put enough people in, and um, if in urban area the price of the land is so expensive. The, the, these are existing places we can rebuild, we can create it on it. Um, then I searched parks. Um, I found that in the early age, parks is used to recreation and um, sports of hunting, nature reserves, riding pieces, and um, it's amazingly I found they use it in shelters. But I'm, I think it must be different from what I am thinking. <laughs> it should be maybe provide them from um, animals, maybe. Uh, and then um, my con I, I want to add my concept on in my research questions. I want to form this shouting functions for park um, for emergency use. Then make it multifunctional in general use and make land. Um, to be fully used. So uh, I asked myself the rest of some questions. How can I find places, both towers, safe area, and the public open spaces? Um, and then what functions shall refugees have? Um, and how urban design contributes to nature disasters to damage? Does high density um, city leads to more damage to life? Um, so, uh? My case study is um, emergency shelters, um, an idea from um, a Japanese um, guy. His, his name is Shigeru Ben, and he um, developed his idea from 1986. Um, he used the materials of paper to make refugees. They, uh, they um, um, experimented in uh, um, technologies and now they can waterproof uh, and even ability to fire. Um, because his idea comes from the big um, earthquake in Japan. They say, uh, he said that uh, they, don't, they live in shelters, they don't have privacy, and they are no hygiene. And everything seems nice. Uh, how can we build this? And this part of the has designs built in paper. Um, actually, I also found his um, materials. He is building our Christ Church Cathedral. Uh, yeah. And my another case study from a concept is a multifunctional park. It's from a Russia group, and they built this park in any many use. Um, Let me go to the end. Ah uh, yes. <laughs> Alright. So well, what I'm saying is to to put my mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I still have uh, one thing to say. Um, yeah. Um, therefore, the principle of the idea of um, is is to alter the public space into a disaster shelter after natural disasters. 
um, but before uh, disasters, I can't find it. So um, um, actually, I lost my power, my uh, piece of PowerPoint. It's a um, it's a it's my technology. It's my techniques to um, uh, from an from a case study. Uh, it's a a guy from Auckland University. Uh, he found um, people use GIS to analyze the Auckland uh, volcano field to um, build up the um, escape space. So this is why I want to learn from him and trying to map our Auckland in this safe place. And I want to uh, use that public spaces maps to um, cross them to um, and this this cross the path is where I'm going to work on and then, um, yeah and after that I'm thinking this kind of um, focus um, is going to cover the surroundings residential and to um, provide refuge to our shelters to um, for disasters. Thank you. Thanks very much. Um, I'm going to have to go, so I'm going to start. That's okay. <laughs> um, the only question that I have, and just something to consider, is: Are, are you going to hone in on a park for where you provide that shelter, or are you keeping it very general? Um, I gonna. Um I'm going to analyze them in general, but finally I'm going to choose one park for my test park. Great. Yeah, no, no, I, I mean, I think it's a, it's a really good idea because, I mean, people do, people, when disaster strike, they do tend to go to parks, oh, you know, so I, it's... I forgot to say something, because I have another idea, if I build this park, it's cover surroundings, and people, how they know this is the safe place, because they are in... Um, the, everything's crazy. They, they lost the maybe the their traffic is broken. Their phone lost the signal. How can they go there? How can they, they know they where should they go? And I'm going to later. I'm going to build a space. Maybe it's in color. It means people can go from there. It's like a bond on the city. Yeah, like a life bond. <laughs> Great idea. Yeah. Yeah. Really like <coughs> the concept itself is fantastic. It's, it's wonderful. Um, I, I'm, I think there's a, a Chilean um, land, a Chilean landscape architect who's, who's done quite a bit of work in this space. I think um, Paul of Viagra. I think. Um, so I'll I'll give it to Matthew. But she's looking at, at exactly this this thing, uh, Chile being similar sort of thing on a volcanic uh, coastline. So um, her work may help inform this. Thank you. Yeah, the tension with looking at parks and Auckland is that they might draw volcanoes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. Because it's, it's really, it's really it's hard it. to find a good case study for mm. me. Thank you. Right, no, it's, a, mm. it's a great project. So it is a, it's a really good project. I think, um, obviously, you know, the landscape has got volcanoes, but probably in Auckland, one of the um, more likely hazards is tsunami. Oh. So earthquakes offshore and then flooding. And I know that DOC, the Department of Conservation, has produced a set of what they call, I think they're called inundation maps. And they show you, um, how where the flooding will go depending on the severity of the tsunami mm -hmm. and and it was in Devonport of course there are cones so you could see which how to get to the top of the cone to avoid the rising waters of the tsunami but also the other thing to, that I noticed was that the the cones already have this function or perhaps they already have this function of a civil defence place because they have tunnels in them. A lot of them, well, several of them, have been excavated you know, to, in order to provide, in the, in the wartime, I think that 
Russian scale or something like that. But they um, they excavated in order to to build defences. So it all kind of goes together in a way. The volcano, which it, which might be the hazard, <laughs> is occupied as a defensive mechanism. I think the other thing that I heard about volcanoes in Auckland was that the next one would be in the harbour, sort of off North Head, so that it might be one which which um, happens elsewhere. It, it, did you? I don't know if they still have in the Auckland Museum. I was told it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, so yeah. cool. It's <laughs> terrifying. It's because everything goes black, and you just think, well, that's that. You know? What can you do? <laughs> So it's a really interesting project, yeah. Can I tell yeah. something? Yeah, of course. Uh, <clears throat> it is an interesting project and I have uh, one negotiated study student who does something very similar so you guys can get together and talk. And <clears throat> I mean, his project is about uh, how people from downtown, is there enough open space that is suitable for immediate refuge to uh, because you know each person needs certain space this space has to be sort of relatively flat should not be planted and uh, it is it is really interesting in, in a way it goes against the mainstream landscape architecture that we want ecological functions and we want to plant everything up with trees mm -hmm. because once it's planted it's not suitable for refuge in, in case of disaster so we do need these big grass areas and to to be able to go there and and it is it is though a different question whether you want to provide for immediate sort of place where they can stay up to one day or, or even several hours or you want to provide for more for longer periods of time for people who lost their homes to be able to stay there a week or a month that, I mean this this sort of different spaces they have different requirements. For example, you, you may survive a day or two on a volcano, but if you have to stay there for a month or so, it might be different. <laughs> mm -hmm. So uh, it's, but there is a lot of literature yes. on that. Yeah, you, uh, I mean, Matt will, will give you, or I can give you Kevin's, my student details. Yeah, yeah, we and, and you can come to his presentations for his final one. Yeah. Great, thanks so much, Kevin. Thank you.